All right. Um, I'll talk loudly, too. Um, my name is Noah Nelson. I'm from Kentucky State University, and uh, I'm a grad student here um, in my last semester. And uh, the project I worked with was uh, muscle activity and respiration rates of paddlefish determined by body mass and temperature in a respirometer. Uh, so uh, this is a project that's under our uh, reservoir ranching. And uh, reservoir ranching is a low input sustainable method of producing paddlefish caviar and uh, meat. It uh, help, helps removes, uh, remove uh, pressures from wild and endangered species and it also can create new job and market opportunities. It's a type of stock and uh, recapture fishery where you can, you'll stock the fish and then at a later date, you'll, uh, you can uh, um, just set gill nets and harvest. And uh, paddlefish were chosen for this because they are a, uh, a fast growing zooplanktivore. So in 2006, uh, regulations were created and uh, approved by the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife to allow uh, stocking of paddlefish into water supply lakes. <coughs> and uh, water supply lakes are defined as that they are owned by a municipality or other pub public water supply entity. Um, they, they provide potable water supply for the public and they are not owned or managed by the Kentucky Department of, of Fish and Wildlife. So, one of the things we need to figure out is what's the carrying capacity of these reservoirs for stocking <laughs> in uh, these water supply lakes. You know, can we can we put a lot or a little? Um, and so we need to figure out the metabolic re uh, requirements of paddlefish, which leads us to bio a bioenergetics model. Uh, and this model will help us to uh, figure out the carrying capacity. Um, so in the model, uh, C is going to be our rate of energy consumption. Uh, M sub R is going to be our standard metabolic rate. M sub A is going to be our metabolic rate increase due to activity. The SDA is going to be our metabolic rate increase due to specific dynamic action. F plus U is our waste losses due to egestion and excretion. And G sub S is SMAT growth due to protein synthesis and lipid deposition. And G sub R is our growth rate due to uh, gonad synthesis. So the, the part of this equation that we're going to be looking at is our M sub R, our standard metabolic rate. So we're going to use a respirometer to, uh, to figure that out. So the respirometer is going to provide a quantitative measure of energy and um, oxygen metabolism. And we can, be able, we can convert that uh, to a metabolic rate in calories. And that metabolic rate, it will be then used to solve the rate of energy consumption. And the energy consumption can tell us, you know, what is the effect that paddlefish have on the zooplankton uh, populations. Um, I think. Okay, I thought I hit the wrong button. Um, so our objectives are to compare oxygen consumption to muscle activity in a tank study. And we'll use, uh, for the tank study, we're going to be using the respirometer, and uh, we're going to use coded electromyogram tags to measure the the muscle activity. And then we want to find the uh, statistical relationship between these two variables. So for uh, our design, we use three size classes of fish. Uh, four kilograms, eight kilograms, and 12 kilograms. And uh, these sizes represent the periods of fastest growth for a paddlefish. Um, so that's, you know, that's really what we wanted to focus on for in these reservoirs after we've stocked them. And we're also going to be looking at four water temperatures, uh, 10, 15, 20, and 25 degrees Celsius. And we're going to have fish, 15 fish per temperature with five replicates per size class. And that will give us a total of 60 fish sampled. And uh, these temperatures are also indicative of uh, the reservoirs that we're going to be testing. So here's a picture of our uh, static respirometer that we're using. Um, we have a water bath surrounding it and a spa heater so we can control the water temperatures. Um, and we also uh, use a dissolved oxygen meter. Um, this is the Strath Kelvin 782. It's a continuous oxygen meter and it's uh, highly accurate and it doesn't absorb any oxygen while it takes its readings. 
And this is a picture of the swimming pattern of paddlefish. And you can tell, you can see from the picture that it swims around the outside of the tank very well in a circular pattern. And um, this is true for all, every single fish. And with some occasions, they'll swim across the middle of the tank, but then once they hit that other wall, they'll just follow it and just keep going in a circle. Um, that kind of shows that they're you know, a continuous swimmer. Um, <coughs> So what did we, how do we use, uh, what did we use to measure the, the muscle activity? We used a coded electromyogram tag from Low Tech, and uh, we used an SRX 600 receiver that uh, receives all the radio waves from these transmitters. And this is the, this is how we implanted the fish. We uh, made about a three uh, centimeter incision, and the radio tag gets slid up into the body <coughs> cavity and then we take a, um, this is a, basically a syringe that has two needles on it and uh, they have metal rods inside of it and we can place the gold electrode tips in the top of that. And so we use that, that instrument to slide the gold electrode tips up into the red muscle tissue along the lateral line. And uh, that's important because we really wanted a consistent <coughs> anchoring point for the electrodes and it's a, uh, they're measured uh, one centimeter apart from each other so that we'll get a consistent uh, placement. So what do we plan to learn from the experiment? We want to learn the relationship of paddlefish muscle activity between these different age classes and temperatures. And uh, we want to see if we can make an association between the oxygen consumption and muscle activity of paddlefish. And so these are the size, this is uh, the second size class. You can see that average <coughs> about 7.88 kilograms. This is the first set of data that I've been able to, uh, to get it up to this point. Um, you can look at the respiration rates. Um, you can see that they increase as temperature increases. Um, the electromyogram values haven't really changed much. Um, and then also the swimming speed also kind of tapers off um, at the higher temperatures. And uh, it'll be I haven't been able to do any statistical tests yet, but once I do the other size classes, I'll be able to look at that and see, you know, will the electromyogram values stay level throughout all size classes, or is this just for this size class? It's just something we'll need to look at. So our future objectives, so after we've completed a tank study, um, we need to use the muscle activities in fish that are then placed into the reservoirs. Um, and we can, then we can compare the, the fish that are in the reservoirs to our tank study. And then we can also use satellite tags to locate paddlefish. So the radio tags will give us a two-dimensional look into, you know, where is this fish in the reservoir? Um, as you know, along the banks or is out in the middle. And then we also need to figure out how deep is the fish swimming at? You know, what are the temperatures down in those depths? Um, this will maybe help us figure out if they're seasonally driven or food driven in these reservoirs during different seasons. Uh, and this uh, Yagi antenna is uh, one way of fusing, uh, finding uh, the radio tags over long distances. And then also the uh, pop-up satellite tags, um, they send a signal to a satellite that you can then download onto your computer um, and it'll it stores data, but then it'll upload it every week, and you can um, you can get temperatures and depths and other variables. Um, and then at some point, you can send out a radio signal that'll uh, release the tag. These are very these are used commonly out in sharks and uh, other marine species and tunas, um, and so that we're we think that'll be beneficial for us. So, well, thank you very much. Um, any questions?